Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update for today, Monday, March 5, 2018. In the news tonight, government seeking legal opinion and possible amendment to the regulations of gun licensing. Gao says cane cutters refused to be reinstated at Rose Hall Estate. Law graduate wants the position of commission of police to be advertised. An engorged scissors thief hammered with 15 months in jail after being caught attempting to sell the items. With the details of these and other stories, I am Ashley Scotland. Thank you for joining us. Now for the news and details. The government is now trying to tighten its grip on the self-approved gun licenses that were done by outgoing commission of police Silal Prasad. But that contraction will take the form of a legal opinion and possible amendment to the regulations of gun licensing. Mikhail John who opens tonight's newscast. Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjitan says he will have to obtain legal advice on how to avoid future ongoing commissioners of police to self-grant gun licenses. Ramjitan made a comment following a press conference on Monday morning at the boardroom of the Ministry of Public Security. Minister Ramjitan says that matter is under serious consideration following the recent scenario with Commissioner of Police Silal Prasad. The minister said he thought that regulations were already made to settle those matters. But there is serious consideration that I will have to go back, you know, quite frankly, I had really thought that there was regulations already made, that it has to come to the ministry. And so over the weekend I was trying, but I don't have the recent edition of the, the regulations. And so I'll have to make a check of it. If it is provided for in there, and I'll ask the Attorney General to also give me an op opinion on it. If not, then we'll have to go back to the, 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 um, the Parliament. I think it will be done in regulations. You don't have to go do uh, an amendment to the Police Act. I think it could be done by regulations. But we can satisfy that by a mere regulation. The Commissioner of Police, Silal Prasad, came on the fire from Minister Ramjitan mere days before Prasad goes on pre-retirement leave. During an interview with media operatives at his passing out parade last week, Prasad said other commissioners of police set the precincts to grant themselves gun licenses. Prasad also told the media that one police commissioner in the 1980s self-approved a gun dealership license. The outgoing police commissioner said he will not pursue his business venture in the gun trade. He stated that he is qualified and well respected in the security sector, both locally and internationally. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. While the Special Purposes Unit is said to have contracted 100 cane cutters at the Rose Hall Estate, the Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union is claiming that workers there have not taken up the offer as a result of a wage dispute. Details from Sandy Ramatar. 100 redundant cane harvesters are expected to start reaping 2,300 hectares of sugar cane at the Rose Hall Sugar Estate. The decision to rehire the laid off workers was taken by the Special Purposes Unit since thousands of sugar canes would have been lost if this was not done. The cane stocks have already been embedded in the fields after works there were made redundant due to the estate being placed on the chopping block. The sugar cane will be taken to the Albion factory for grinding given its economic viability. The contracted harvesters will be paid by the SPU who will later recoup the funds from the sale of molasses. On a positive note, workers are also expected to harvest 4,300 hectares of sugarcane for the second crop. Meanwhile, the union claims that workers did not take up the offer. The refusal stemmed from a dispute regarding fair wages, according to President of the Union, Komal Chand. No one has taken up work at Rosal because they do not approve the rate that is offered to them and they want to be represented, they want their employment, they want to be represented by the union. He pointed out that incentives and non-tax weekends were included in the workers' wages in the past. However, that deal has now been omitted as a contractor will be responsible for overseeing the new development. Sandy Ramutar, 
For MTV's News Update. A chartered accountant and law graduate wants the position of Commissioner of Police to be advertised to attract persons from Guyana and the Caribbean. However, the government is satisfied with the process provided in the Constitution. Nicole John filed this report. Outgoing Police Commissioner Sila Prasad will hand over duties to Second in Command David Ramnarain. Ramnarain will act as the Commissioner of Police until a substantial individual has been appointed by President David Granger. Until such appointment, Ramnarain will execute the functions of the police commissioner. Today, Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjitan says that he is pleased with the current structure in which a commissioner of police is appointed. He noted that the matter sits entirely with the head of state, the opposition leader, and the nominees from the police service commission. There is a process under the constitution, and that constitutional process should be adhered to. Um, there, if for the gathering of more um, candidates you need an advertisement, that will be an entirely a question on the, the, the president's part. The president is the one who makes the appointment of a police commissioner um, based on consultations with leader in the opposition, and I think after consultation to the police service commission. I, I am comfortable with that setup. I am very comfortable with that setup. Yeah, well, as the president, yeah, as the president in the, yeah, as the president and Mr. Joe Harmon indicated, there are some names and the appointments will be made shortly. Um, I don't know how shortly, but that is with the office of the presidency. Meantime, political commentator Ralph Ramkaran believes that the post of commissioner of police should be advertised to facilitate applicants from Guyana and the Caribbean to be selected. He noted that President Granger has implemented a policy in relation to the posts of Chancellor and Chief Justice, for which he had argued forcefully as leader of the opposition. He noted that the process was productive because one such applicant was nominated for the post of Chancellor. Ram Karan said consistency demands that the position of Commissioner of Police be similarly advertised so as to attract the best qualified from Guyana and the region. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. With West Coast Demerara residents now recovering from the horrific spring tide, the Minister of Natural Resources says drainage was a major concern for persons and also the accessibility of bridges to maneuver the canals. Yanis Abrams with the details. Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman believes that the Civil Defense Commission's alertness was excellent. His statement follows the spring tide which occurred on the west coast of Demerara over the weekend, affecting many residents of Lenora, Stewartville, and then Amstel. Some sections of the seawalls were broken due to the overtopping of the water. Trotman mentioned this will be a serious issue to be brought up at Cabinet since there are interventions that need to be available. Well, the concerns, as I said in the main, had to do with drainage, uh, had to do with concerns about squatting, had to do with regularization, and, and uh, people are concerned about meals and damage to equipment. But thankfully, no one is blaming government or the NDC or the region because they, they know what the situation is like. I think the concern is how do we ensure that in the future we are better protected, better prepared, and it does not repeat itself. So um, some persons who are in the shelter here want to know when they can go back to their homes and so we're working to one uh, repair some bridges in the wall which is ongoing and in the second instance is to provide some drains uh, which have been either blocked or none at all non-existent and in the Stewartville area there's a dire need for a proper bridge uh, to cross uh, a major canal so that people can get across and bring their things across and um, so that that's immediate for us. According to the minister, there are three buildings that were destroyed in Stewartville. The minister also stated the government is working to have the lives of residents restored. Well, I think you'll find that the critical ministers um, are coming or have sent their representatives. And so this, I'm sure, 
I expect will be the main topic for discussion at our cabinet meeting in, in 48 hours time. It's not so far away. Uh, the high tide is warning is still on and so we don't want to get into a sense of it's over but one of stabilization and so at cabinet meeting on Tuesday the various ministers and agencies will give a full report but as I said I'm quite uh, relieved by the efforts of the CDC which uh, is the lead agency for civil defense um, and disaster relief and the protocols have kicked in and they're working and that is good. Several ministries the CDC along with the Ghana Fire Service rendered assistance to residents. The Leonora Hospital was closed over the weekend. Reporting for MTV's News Updates, I am Yanis Abrams. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. At Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations in Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice, the choice is clear. clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick fit for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket a day could make you rich today. Pretis Fashions. For all your exclusive Indian wear, come to Pretis Fashions, located at 183 Bar Street, Kitty. We have a wide variety of shalwars, gararas, saris, three-piece quarter suits, bridal wear, children outfits, and accessories for all. Pretis Fashions, 183 Bar Street, Kitty. Telephone number 227-8644. You're still with news update, welcome back. The People's Progressive Party is lambasting the government for being partisan, but their latest attack on the government stemmed after the hoisting of the Golden Arrowhead at the Curvaton municipality on February 23 was halted. Find out more in this Sandy Ramatar report. The People's Progressive Party is bothered as the government seems to be the owner of national festivals. So says General Secretary of the PPP, Bharat Jagdiu. His speculation follows the government's intervention to halt the hoisting of the national arrowhead, Guyana's national flag, at the Caribbean municipality. And for you to seize the flag at a, an activity organized by the town council, democratically organized, simply because you cannot get and one of your coalition officials to speak last is the total disrespect for all that we st stand for. It's reminiscent of the past and it harms the national project that I'm talking about, the national project of building a single future for all of our people. Chagdeo says such actions are worrying as the government claims they intend to harmonize Guyana. Chagdeo says the national flag represents a symbol of nationhood and not that of the government or party officials. So where Ramjatan spoke was more important to them than raising 
our national flag in Corriverton. That's the pettiness. And all of this lame excuse about they didn't seek permission is just what I just said, lame. It is, it, it is just to sidetrack from, from this despicable act. The flag raising ceremony was halted based on the direction of the Minister of Social Protection, Amna Ali. The decision came on the heels of the mayor rejecting a cabinet minister to speak on behalf of the Minister of Communities. However, the council claimed they had already invited a substantive speaker to conduct the feature dress at the event. As such, the council will be briefing the Caribbean Local Government Association by way of a letter on the matter. This follows a consensus emanating from the municipality's meeting on March 1. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Several partnership proposals have been received by the National Agricultural Research and Extension Institute, NARI, from private investors as there is a need to cultivate potatoes on a large scale in Guyana. NARI is currently in the process of procuring modern potato seed storage equipment. Chief Executive Officer Dr. Udhu Homnat stated $5 million has been allocated under the Capital Works program for the procurement of the equipment and the research arm of the Ministry of Agriculture. Acting Executive Director of the Environmental Protection Agency, Kemraj Parsram, has confirmed that there was an oil spill that reached Kingston seashore. However, the agency has not been able to detect where the spill occurred. Here is more from Nikhil Jondo. The Environmental Protection Agency is still investigating the substance that was found at Kingston Seawall Friday last. The substance was discovered after persons were walking on the shoreline. Acting Executive Director of the EPA, Kemraj Parsaram, confirms that it is an oil spill. However, he claims it is nothing major. Parsaram said an investigation is ongoing as the EPA is seeking to ascertain the nature of the spill. Several commentaries attacked U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil for the substance discovered. The company in a statement said, there was no operational upset related to ExxonMobil's operations offshore Guyana. It stated that the substance found on the Kingston Seashore, Georgetown area, is not a result of their operation. The company said it can confirm that there is no drilling operation at this time. It said that Pakora One Well activities have been completed. ExxonMobil also stated that the EPA is aware and is investigating and will take necessary action. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Business operators in Region 1 have been calling for the establishment of several community policing groups to secure their welfare. While that may not be a reality, the Minister of Public Security is assuring those persons that training will be conducted for them to process information into intelligence. Nikal Jaundu followed this report. Minister of Public Security Kamaraj Ramjitan says the government will be taking additional measures to secure the country's borders. Minister Ramjitan said training will have to be done with the local communities that are on the borders, especially in Region 1. In recent months, there has been a buzz of activities at the border with Venezuelans crossing over into Guyana, seeking medical care and other related activities. You might not have the, the, the classic intelligence coming from um, that kind of community that might hardly... Um, know how to analyze information and make it intelligence but we want the information so if they see strangers and they see venezuelans coming in and doing a couple of things we would like them to telephone us at the, the headquarters here at the ministry and say well we have a couple that also helps because the policemen are also doing it army people that are doing patrols there are also doing it but they sometimes pass on and move out the police station is a far away and these are scattered villagers who can then send it in through the WhatsApp and all of that. And that has happened before. Minister Ramjitan noted that a strategic plan will be in place to assist the security forces that are already at the border. He noted that several business persons have made a call 
to form themselves into community policing groups. There have been calls from some members, especially those that own shops, that they've indicated to me that they would like to set up some CPG and uh, groups uh, to, for purposes of also enhancing at, at, that, at that level, the local level, their security and having uh, groups that are going to do the patrols and the surveillance and so on. And some of them want what you think called the precepts so that they could also be like with, with, with some police powers because you don't have very many police men in, and women in those areas and they're so far flung. Um, you'll have a village, a main village and then around that village house, uh, housing areas and so on and uh, that as a special geographic need for it in there. President David Granger had to cancel an overseas trip to address security matters in Region 1. During that visit by the head of state, he assured the residents of Region 1 that the government is doing everything possible to ensure the nation's extensive borders are protected. The president had stated that the villagers need to remain steadfast and vigilant as those communities are the frontier guardians of Guyana's territorial integrity and national security. The president said villagers are the country's first line of defense against any attempt at incursions and invasions. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Coming up, malaria carrying Anopheles mosquito is prevalent in Region 1 and upgrade the Latham airstrip still in its primary stage, says the regional chairman. Modern optical service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern optical service, your eye care professionals. The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me Tayo's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Ana Catarina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I'm like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody know the secret. <laughs> Need a vacation? Thinking of leaving the country? Then visit Millennia Travel Agency and book your flight today. We are located on the top floor in the City Mall at Camp and Region Streets. We book flights for Caribbean Airlines, Suriname Airways, Copa Airlines, Liat, Fly Jamaica and all major airlines. We also book hotel and cruise packages. Visit or call us on 225-7354 for more information. Millennia Travel Agency for all your travel needs. Fresh ingredients in Creole foods at the Cottage Restaurant and Cafe. Finger licking, boil and fry, meats cooked to perfection. No MSG added. We cater for vegetarians too. Breakfast and lunch available fresh Mondays through Fridays. We open 7 a.m. Get coffee, Milo, or our famous power porridge filled with a blend of indigenous barks, natural fruit juices, catering services and delivery available. Call 231-4343, located at 16 Access Road, Kingston, the Cottage Restaurant and Cafe, bringing back the good old days. 
It's John Lewis Styles buy one get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. It's John Lewis Styles buy one get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. The malaria carrying an off fleece mosquito is prevalent in Region 1 as 16,000 cases of malaria were recorded last year. It is against this backdrop that the Minister of Public Health has beefed up surveillance in that region. Here is more from Sandy Ramatar. According to the medical news today, malaria is a life-threatening mosquito-borne blood disease transmitted to humans through the bite of the Anopheles mosquito. Once an infected mosquito bites a human, the parasites multiply in the person's liver before infecting and destroying red blood cells. Sadly, Guyana is not exempted from the dangerous malaria-carrying mosquito, which places persons at risk, especially those living in interior locations. The prevalence of malaria continues in the Barimawini region, according to Regional Health Officer Dr. Cordell McQuartz. However, a number of precautionary measures are in place to limit the spread of the disease. Uh, the destruction of breeding sites, more so chemotherapy, which is active case, the infection and treatment, and more so health promotion activities um, so that people can be aware of uh, how it's been transmitted. Also, we're looking at, um, you know, the linen or the insect treated in linen being distributed to all the populace. Some 16,000 persons were tested positive with the disease last year. 750 of them were Venezuelans. While there have been a vast number of reported cases, there has been no post-mortem results indicating death. The disease is said to be prevalent in regions 1, 7 and 8 as a result of mining activities. The Vector Control Service had cited the disease as the most prevalent vector-borne disease across the country. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The West Front Road community conducted its second seed planting exercise at their cooperative garden and compound of Youth Challenge Guyana, YCG. According to YCG's Executive Director Dimitri Nicholson, the Urban Agriculture Project is aimed at developing the skills, knowledge and talents of the residents to advance food and nutrition security in the community. This second seed planting exercise also aims to expand the yield production for those participating in a community project and is supported by the Guyana School of Agriculture. According to the Chairman of Region 9, Brian Alicock, plans to upgrade the road linking Lethem to Linden is still in an ongoing process. Lashana Gomes Cornelius with the details. Alicock indicated that at the moment only minor works are being carried out on one of the main roads in the township of Lethem. From Lethem to Linden is just an upgrading for now because we don't know how far the discussions with Guyana and Brazil is concerning that um, road yet. There are discussions going on, you know, to have it safe. Alikog noted with bridges in the region being a major means of transport, which regularly accommodates the use of heavy-duty vehicles, most of those bridges are now in a very deplorable condition. According to Alikog, adequate and safe bridges in the region will play an integral part in ensuring the construction of roads are done in the most safest and efficient way possible. Well, of course, we have to look at the bridges and so because they are telling us that um, they went through and checked. None of the bridges could accommodate the containers that the Brazil would want to um, bring through to the, um, the seaport in um, this area. So we'll have to look at that too. It's a lot of work, a lot of um, money has got to be spent. The government of Guyana in December 2017 inked two agreements with neighboring Brazil. The agreement on infrastructure is one in which the two countries committed to enhancing the infrastructure in the interest of economic and social integration. The construction of the long-awaited linden Letim Road is one of the key projects under this agreement. Reporting for MTV News Update, 
Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Chairman of Region 9, Brian Alicock, says governments plan to upgrade the Latham airstrip into a regional hub and international aerodrome is still in its primary stage. The transformation, as indicated by the government, would seek to accommodate flights originating from Brazil and other Latin American neighbors. Lashonda Gomes Cornelius filed with this report. As an incentive to the upgrade of the Latham airstrip, several persons need to undertake training at the Aeronautical Training School located at Ogle. However, Chairman of Region 9 Brian Alicock noted no one from the region has since been chosen to be a part of the training program, which is integral to the proper functioning of the facility once completed. Mm -hmm. It will be selection before they take the people to Georgetown. They haven't done that so far. They came just a visit, but they didn't select anyone. What is going to happen? They're going to train the guys for two to three days and then give them a test. And who is successful, then they take them, take them down to Ogre for further training. So we're hoping to get good news by this, this month and that, okay, they have kicked off the training for our people to uh, man and control the tower here. So that is the plan. Um, up to now, they have not released anything. The president said, well, okay. They're, um, they're looking at that, but we don't know how soon that would be effective. Moreover, Alicoc revealed while the region will be in a better financial position once the project is completed, there is still a lot more that needs to be done in order to see results. Alicoc stressed that the Rupununi's development is an important goal of the government and those that live and work there. Having the Latham Airstrip be transformed into a regional hub and international aerodrome would be quite beneficial to the region's development. Um, we'll have to have proper infrastructure, the, 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 um, mm -hmm. especially to the sites where people would want to go mountain, mountain climbing and so on. And you transport them in comfortable uh, on the roadways and so on, and then they'll go for the exercise and experience of the mountain trekking and so on. So these are the things we got to develop, no? The envisioned plan by government was pitched by Minister of Finance Winston Jordan during the 2018 national budget. During his budget speech, Minister Jordan had revealed that several interior airstrips would be rehabilitated and constructed, with about $250 million allocated for such projects. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Still ahead, Puran Brothers Incorporated given $19 million contract in Region 7. Stay tuned. Relationship difficulties, depression, family challenges. Grief and loss are some situations in our lives that can cause us to feel unlike ourselves. Are you facing any such situations? Have you considered counseling? It is time you talk to a professional counselor. Let's talk. Call the helpline on 223-0001, 223-0009, or 223-0818 to talk to a helpline counselor near you today. Your emotions are important. Make an impression with the finest towels imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various towels for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. 
you can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. The circle starts with solid support and a smile. This is real life. With its ups and its downs, this is going the extra mile. And the feeling you get when you can help someone along their journey. Through the twists and turns, we're here. This is Western Union, making sure your support reaches its destination. This is Western Union, moving money for better. to news update, welcome back. The Mayor of Bartica, Gifford Marshall, has announced that the Minister of Communities has signed a multi-million dollar contract with Poor and Brothers Incorporated to maintain Region 7's dump site for 18 months. Yanis Abram has filed the story. According to the Mayor of Bartica, Gifford Marshall, a $19 million contract was signed between the Ministry of Communities and Poor and Brothers Incorporated for the latter to manage the region's dump site in Baidirabo for 18 months. Marshall, during an exclusive interview with News Update, stated that for the past three weeks, the operators have been on site. Um, that is a major achievement for our municipality because um, over the last two years, um, we would have invested millions of dollars to manage that dump site at Baidirabo. And that money would have come, of course, from the, co the council um, council funds. So they decided to chip in and um, Puran Brothers will be managing that site for another 18 months and I, like I said it's 19 million dollars for that contract. The Bartica mayor mentioned the municipality is quite pleased with the contract which was signed in January. Like I said it's a major achievement for the municipality because um, that project of course, um, well that site by Drabble site was an eyesore um, four or five years ago and we had to um, really spend a lot of money there to bring it to where it is right now. So we're very grateful to the Ministry of Communities and all stakeholders who continue to work with us to ensure that um, solid waste management is under control within the Township of Bartica. On November 28, 2016, the Bartica Town Council launched the Solid Waste Sensitization Program to educate persons about proper garbage disposal. Bartica, Guyana's first green town, was granted the township status by President David Granger. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The program, the President Youth Award Initiative, has started with youths living with disabilities, has been impactful to the youths involved. This is according to the Executive Officer of the PYARG, Dr. Alistair Collins. Here are the details from Lashana Gomes Cornelius. The President Youth Award MS program is the Duke of Edinburgh International Award in Guyana program designed to encourage young people to improve their own standards, engage and share in exciting adventures and achievements. The program is non-discriminatory as persons with varying disabilities are allowed to partake. Executive Officer of the PYARG, Dr. Alistair Collins, during an exclusive interview with News Update, related how impactful the various learning and community activities have been so far for the young people of the Open Doors Training Center. Dr. Collins revealed since the project took action, there has been only positive feedback from both the students and their parents. Well, community service in the um, general sense is for them to learn a self of uh, sense of selflessness. So they do things or activities giving back to the community. Recently, they would have completed their uh, tree planting exercise, which is right in the compound, and that's a community service that they'll have to take care of those plants, given the Green Economy Initiative, as well as they're uh, doing phys for physical recreation. They they go at uh, Colgrain Pool, that's during the week, uh, and that's during school hours. I think it's from 10. Um, 
So they have responded well and we are providing the necessary training and activities for them under the relevant supervision. Taking the charge of the President Youth Award MS program to other similar organizations, Dr. Collins indicated it is the mission of the PYARG to ensure that organizations with a need for such a course be afforded the opportunity to do so. Pilot in the sense that it's the first, but we also have engaged uh, gifted hands they're also with the program and we are in talks with the Deaf Association um, and they should um, start the program pretty soon. So it has been gathering uh, momentum. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashana Gomes, Green Elias. The Bartica Regatta is expected to be the highlight of this year's Easter weekend. The fun-filled event will begin from March 17 to April 2. Here is more on this Yanis Abrams report. The much-anticipated highlight for the Easter weekend in the town of Bartica is the annual Bartica Regatta. Mayor of the town, Gifford Marshall, mentioned that this year's committee will be headed by the Bartica Development Business Association which the stakeholders and sponsors are pleased about. The mayor believes that, with the new head of the committee, the regatta is expected to return to what it was known for many years as the place to be during the Easter weekend. And it's a group that we endorse, a group that we believe um, has the interests of Bardico at, uh, at heart. And we believe that um, they will do an excellent job in um, presenting to Guyano, um, this national event that we all are very proud of. So we have the deputy mayor who is the vice chair on that same um, committee. We also have the town clerk and a number of other councillors are part of the regatta committee. And preparations are ongoing um, and we expect a very great, or I should say, a massive regatta this year. In commemoration of the 2018 Bartka regatta, Marshall said the municipality's Golden Beach Boulevard is almost completed where patrons can view the racing circuit. Now, um, one of the highlights of that regard will be the boardwalk. Um, it's almost completed. When I say almost, I mean, it's just a few finishing touches need to be done there. Um, but it's a great work in progress. And of course, those persons who are visiting Bartico for the regatta will be very impressed with what they will see. During a previous telephone interview with the event coordinator for the 2018 Batka Regatta, Halbert Knights, he mentioned that the committee has been faced with the challenge to garner the support the event had in the previous years. Knights further listed the activities that are planned for the Easter holiday. We have um, reintroduced a full sports package, cricket, dominoes, basketball, volleyball, um, tennis, uh, street football, uh, we have Jim Cano, we, we have boxing. Uh, these are some new, the Jim Cano and the boxing are some relatively new inputs into it. Uh, of course, we have the regular river swim. Uh, we also have some new entertainment features. Uh, we have a talent competition, Barticus Got Talent competition. We have uh, a beach party for Sunday, uh, which is the first day of racing. After the racing, we will have some artists on a stage which we are building over the water uh, to entertain patrons who are there for the regatta. We will also be having some bits and pieces of entertainment in between the races. We have two days of racing. Um, we also have uh, shifted the pageant from, Saturday, from Sunday night to Saturday night. That is to give um, people more freedom on Sunday because our intention is to allow the party on the beach to continue way into Sunday night. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Stay tuned for Court Roundup as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. so much Windex for clean windows, all them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business, I got big plans. But BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh hey, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window, but look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home and 
Eccles. It named Beeson. Like you and a nothing girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Looking for fresh meals, tasty pastries and bread? Then visit Pam and Steve Bakery at 127 4th Street in Stone Avenue, Campbellville. Come and enjoy our daily breakfast and lunch specials. Choose from our wide variety of delightful meals. For the Christmas holidays, place your order for our black sponge and fruitcakes. Be sure to drop by for our Sunday breakfast special, pepper pot and more. Opens every day except holidays. So next time you're in town, remember to visit Pam and Steve Bakery or call us on 226-5338. Introducing our new brand of all-weather fiberglass rocking chairs for complete relaxation. We supply quality, durable, and low-maintenance indoor and outdoor table and chairs for your patio, restaurants, cafeteria, reception area, and much more. So sit back and enjoy quality products from Fibertech with guaranteed factory warranty. Here is what went down at the Georgian Magistrates Court on March 5. Men were on Monday remanded to prison for breaking into a car and stealing 5.3 million in cash and items. Alvin Solomon, 34, and Asif Khan, 54, both taxi drivers, along with Liston Grimond, a 35-year-old minibus driver, were jointly charged and placed before Principal Magistrate Judy Latchman. Particulars of the charge alleged that the trio on February 26, 2018, at Alexander Street to Georgetown, stole 5 million in cash and 49 mm rounds, property of Inchan Ali Bacchus. The men denied the charge. Meanwhile, Solomon was charged separately for having 49 mm rounds of ammunition in his possession while not being a licensed firearm holder on February 27 at Bergdam. He denied this charge. Police prosecutor Arvin Moore told the court that on February 26, Ali Bacchus parked his car in front of a store along Alexander Street and went inside to conduct business. While inside of the store, Moore noted that someone came and informed the Bacchus that his car is being broken into. The victim reported the matter to the police and after reviewing CCTV footage in the area, Khan and Grimond were arrested. On February 27, Solomon was arrested and his car was searched. The stolen ammunition was found inside. However, Solomon's attorney, during an application for bail, told the court that his client was intercepted in his motor vehicle in Grove, East Bangdamarara, and was arrested. The lawyer noted that Solomon was placed in the police van while a police officer drove his car to the Bergdam police station. The lawyer further added that his client had no knowledge of the ammunition and how it got into his car. Nevertheless, the magistrate remanded the men to prison until March 19. Meanwhile, a 21-year-old man was on Monday sentenced to 50 months in jail by Principal Magistrate Judy Latchman for an armed robbery charge. Darren Bailey confessed that on March 2 at Hinker Street to Georgetown, while being armed with a pair of scissors, he robbed Mahindra Dunot of an LG cell phone valued $25,000 
and a $2,000 wallet with $240 inside. Police Prosecutor Arvin Moore told the court that on the day in question, the victim was walking along Hink Street when Bailey approached him and held a pair of scissors to his neck. Moore noted that the defendant took away the items mentioned in the charge and made good his escape. However, he was arrested under the Starbrook Market clock attempting to sell the items. Magistrate Latchman sentenced Bailey to 50 months in jail. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 763. Let's turn our attention to the Demerara Harbor Bridge schedule. That's all we have for in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Government seeking legal opinion and possible amendment to the regulations of gun licensing. Gao says cane cutters refused to be reinstated at Rose Hall Estate. Law graduate wants the position of commission of police to be advertised. An in court scissors thief hammered with 50 months in jail after being caught attempting to sell the items. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcast later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Tuesday, March 6. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I am Ashley Scotland, thanking you for watching. Good night.